When I applied to medical school in my gap year, I didn't really have a lot of people to ask questions or practice the interview with. I didn't even have an opportunity to attend practice interview sessions because I wasn't in school at the time. I was clueless. How will the questions be asked? Will they be similar to the job interviews I've had? Should I prepare a whole tear-jerking story about why I want to become a doctor? If you ask yourself any of these questions, this video might be helpful. Hi everyone, it's Kay Young here. Today, I'll be talking about how to prepare for medical school interviews. I'm going to explain the interview structure, the steps I took to prepare, some resources I use, and strategies you can apply for yourself. I've included the timestamps down below so you can jump to the information you need. So, if you're interested in making your interview prep process more smooth and more fun, then keep on watching. The interview structure can be divided into two types, multiple mini interview or MMI or traditional interview. I had two MMI interviews at UBC and Dow and one traditional interview at U Ottawa. To talk about MMI first, it consists of multiple stations 10 to 11 and each station has its own prompt. You will be given two minutes to read the prompt posted on the door and when the bell rings, you go into the room and interact with the interviewer for seven to eight minutes. And when the bell rings again, you move on to the next station. The whole interview takes about two hours. Each school has a slightly different interview structure, so make sure you do your research and get familiarized. The interviewers come from diverse backgrounds. They can be physicians, faculty members, community members, or current medical students. And they won't know anything about you other than your name. Each MMI station has different types of questions and scenarios. For example, there can be a station about ethics, which can be medically related but not always, and what would you do if kind of station where you either have to explain to the interviewer or act it out with an actor in the room. Timor station, which was my favorite, where two people go in at the same time and one person teaches something to the other person. It can be a drawing instruction or teaching how to tie shoelaces. And there can be a station about your personal experience where the interviewer asks you personal questions like what is your biggest strength and when did you have to act as a leader? What is nice about the MMI structure is that if you don't think you did well in one station, that's okay. Every station is a new opportunity because each station is evaluated independently and the interviewers don't discuss among themselves. You'll probably be nervous for the first couple of stations but you'll get the hang of it and it'll be fine for the rest of the stations. Next, to talk about the traditional interview, you go into a room and you interact with a panel of interviewers for the whole duration of the interview, which was 45 minutes at U Ottawa for me. They can ask you to tell them about yourself and since they have already read your application, they will ask you about specific activities and experiences you've had. I can't give you any specific examples of the questions because they're tailored to your application, but it's still best to practice some common questions like why do you want to be a doctor, and how would you act in a certain situation, and etc. In terms of how to prepare for the interview, I divided into four steps. First, and the most important, is to get to know yourself. Go through your application. What did you learn from your extracurricular activities? How can those skills be applied to the medical setting? And how did those experiences make you become a better leader or communicator? Rather than talking in so much detail about the experience itself, always remember to connect back to how that will make you become a good physician. Second is to read over the practice questions to get familiarized with how the questions can be presented. There are so many practice questions online so I couldn't do all of them, but I made sure to do some from each category. And I'll link some practice questions down below. I do think that there are essential questions that you should try to craft into a coherent response, such as tell me about yourself. Why do you want to become a physician? What is your biggest strength or weakness? Any obstacles you've had to overcome in your life? Try brainstorming these questions, write them down, and practice saying out loud. I'm not trying to say that you should memorize them like a script. Actually, I would advise against that because then it would sound unnatural, but at least have a general framework of your response ingrained in your brain so that it comes out naturally. Third is to practice with your friends. If there is one thing I wish I had done more, this is it. I practiced with three friends at different times for a total of six hours, but I wish I could have done more. Practice with your friends and family and they can give you feedback about whether your response sounded coherent and logical. And you can even practice acting with them for scenario-based questions. Fourth is research. Find more about the program at each school. What is special about their program compared to the rest of the schools? Do they have a big focus on research, community service? 
Is there a curriculum in blocks or spiral structure? You may even be asked a question like, why do you want to go here? And find out what the school is looking for. There might be some keywords like empathy, motivation, teamwork, professionalism, resiliency, and so on. I tried to bring out these aspects as much as possible when I talked about my personal experience. As for resources, I found Course Grinder on YouTube really helpful. They go through different scenarios as well as how you would approach them. You'll probably get different scenarios at your own interview, but at least you'll be able to apply the skills you've learned. There are also sample interview videos and you can make a note of how the applicant presents themselves and how they approach the question. And like I mentioned, there are practice questions online and I'll try to link some of them down below. You can also find some really useful interview strategies online and I really like the STAR strategy. STAR is an acronym which stands for Situation, Task, action and response. So situation is where you briefly describe the setting, task is the thing you were tasked to do, action is the specific action you took during that time, resolution is the outcome as a result of your action. So this is a really nice structure that you can apply to your situation. If you don't know how to answer a certain question, don't panic. You can be honest and say you don't know and that you would like to learn more about it. We're all humans, we don't know everything, and the interviewers will know that too because they're also humans. But they might still want to see how you react under stress. Try to show that you are able to think on your feet by gathering up what you do know and saying something like, I'm not 100% sure but based on what I know, blah blah blah, so I would think blah blah blah. If the question is ambiguous, you can always ask for more information like, do you mind clarifying what you mean by blank? At the end of the day, you're not going to remember all these strategies and you shouldn't try to either. As cliche as it sounds, the best thing to do is to be yourself. There is no one else like you in this world. Relax and approach the interview as a conversation and not a Q&A. The interviewers want to get to know you as a person and not just grill you with difficult questions and give you a hard time. Don't forget that you are there because you are a successful candidate and you are being strongly considered for the program. Make eye contact, smile, and give a firm handshake because first impression matters and try to enjoy the opportunity without worrying about what the outcome might be. I remember at one MMI station, I left the room laughing because the interviewer and I connected on a personal level over a small thing that we found in common. So when the bell rang and as I was rushing out the door, the interviewer told me to check some things out that weren't totally related to the interview question. So see the interviewers as people and not monsters. Alright, I'm going to wrap up this video here, but I really hope this was helpful. As always, thank you so much for watching, and it's been so nice connecting with some of you guys in the comments and seeing messages on Instagram and emails and so on. I hope to keep making these videos and hearing from you guys really keeps me motivated. So thank you, and I will see you in the next video. Bye!